All right. Well, what we have is this coming Saturday night. This is just a small part of what you're going to be seeing at the Alberta Rose Theater. The Next Waltz is a, a wonderful collaboration of so many different minds, spirits, and uh, musicianship coming together. And apparently, uh, as you get a community of everybody coming together, there has to be a head. And Jeff, <laughs> apparently, uh, you put this bad boy together, right? Yeah, with uh, endless amounts of help from all the people up here and uh, about almost 60 musicians who are going to be on stage over the course of the night. That's got to be next a Next Saturday. Thing. And uh, uh, that was Holcomb Waller, by the way, singing Helpless there. Yeah, tell us who we've got up on stage right now, as a matter of fact. Holcomb That's was singing. Right. And uh, Louis Longmire is uh, playing guitar and strapping on a mandolin. He's fixing to sing Emmy Lou Harris' uh, Evangeline with Emily Butler here. And uh, we've got Christy Lane and Adam East in the house playing on that last one. And they're each going to they're gonna play on uh, Joni Mitchell's Coyote as well. And Steve Karen here, who's from the band Bertheline, and is uh, our MVP. He's going to play on almost every song in the night. We've got three house bands backing him up. And Steve is uh, part of all of them, has wormed his way into all of them. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, it's a benefit for uh, Musicians Healthcare and for the Food Bank, and it's just a great celebration of Portland's musical community. So you say close to 60 musicians. How do you collaborate? How do you bring that all together, rile all that together? Are folks just going to be coming in and off the stage with those three house bands all night long? Pretty much, yeah. The cool thing about this tribute concert is it's not just a tribute to one artist like right. a lot of the concerts we have because the last waltz involved so many guests as well we've got lots of different styles of music happening lots of different uh feels you know some some comedy stuff some more moving stuff like we just heard so it'll be a lot of variety did the musicians come to you and say this is what i feel most comfortable with in this and let me try for the this most one? part i said hey how would you like to do yeah. this song i had the idea a few years ago and uh just sort of all these parallels between the performers at the last waltz and people I know in this musical community came to mind. And, uh, I said, Oh yeah, she'd be good for, uh, for Emmy Lou and he'd be good for Neil Young. And we've got, uh, Walt Curtis, the great Portland beat poet reading the Ferlinghetti poem for us. So, uh, wherever I could, uh, pick somebody to evoke the original and how long has this project been coming together for right now how do you how long has i mean there has to be rehearsals right yeah how long have you been uh, rehearsing for this bad boy well i think the bands have been working on at least three months probably wow. something around that maybe not quite <laughs> yeah <laughs> two weeks, we say uh, maybe three <laughs> days if i'm uh, <laughs> if i'm lucky but uh yeah the idea has taken shape over the last half a year i guess all right, so this is happening this Saturday night, and we are talking the Alberta Rose Theater. Let's talk about what it really is. We said benefit, but actually, Jeremy will and your your organization, right? Tell us a little bit about the Jeremy Wilson Foundation. Well, it, it got started just about a year and a half ago. Um, this community about five years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with a congenital heart condition that, uh, and I was without health care and had been spending the last twenty five years on the road with the Dharma bums and pilot and stuff, and uh, and I was. Uh, uninsured and in a very uh, uh, vulnerable space. And really what happened was this community came behind me and uh, and helped me get the uh, operations. I had three of them and stuff. And it's just, I realized, you know, trying to get through the healthcare system and figure out where I was at and the fact that, you know, I was a musician that worked for myself, so I didn't qualify for anything except sort of self-employment insurance rates and stuff and learned a lot about what the issues were and stuff. And I was like, wow, I've got a whole community of people coming to help me. What do people like, you know, what do little old ladies do? Or like, you know, what do people with less resources or, or who haven't written lots of songs that have touched people, you know, that, you know, to, so that was sort of like kind of the inspiration was just like, wow, I, I need to give back. And, and, and a, a group of wonderful volunteer board members group has come together and, and wonderful volunteers like Renee that's sitting here in the, in the, uh, audience here have come to, uh, put this together. And since March alone, we've given about $20,000 worth of assistance to uh, local musicians. And, um, yeah, we're getting ready to, <laughs> in, uh, in the coming year, we're, we're, um, hoping to launch a 
several other programs and uh, the newest program that we just launched was actually through uh, my old studio which we've turned into the JWF Studio and Learning Center where um, we're now doing uh, granting free lessons to to kids here in town while at the same time creating jobs for musicians so yeah your works are good, my man, and uh, you know it's amazing how the creative side of our society is left uh, many times without healthcare. Well, you know the, the the irony was is that every time there's a you know a catastrophe or something happens, who everybody goes to musicians. Let's throw a concert. Let's do all this stuff. You know, I always go to the art community for help. But then at the end of the day, you've uh, we've run surveys, in fact, through a professional marketing company and found that, in fact, artists were 30, you know, were at 30 percent unemployed. I mean, not unemployed, 30 percent uh, uninsured, where the national average was 15 percent and stuff. And that the average debt that the musicians that we uh, over 400 musicians that we um, uh, uh interviewed and stuff were on average had twelve thousand dollars worth of of medical debt that they were paying off so uh it's a very serious issue obviously not just for artists it's it's a national conversation that we're all having but we're you know trying to find a a way that we can be um you know uh, self-motivated and help each other and so it's really the idea is musicians helping musicians and uh and it's a way i hope everybody will come out to the november 26th at the alberta rose theater to see the next waltz it's i guarantee you it's going to be a fabulous three hours of music and um and help not only raise some money for the foundation and the programs that we're doing but also bring a few cans of food for oregon food bank I wanted to reiterate that, too, as well. So uh, it's all about this and the time with it being uh, the holidays, of course, uh, we could always bring because hungry and uninsured are two things not to yeah. be as a human, right? All right. Once again, this Saturday, November 26th, Alberta Rose Theater, yep. the next waltz. You want to get some more music on? Uh, let's do the music. Gentlemen, That's what it's all that. about. Thanks. Let's hear it for him again. And we're going to hear from Casey Neal as well. I didn't mention his name, but he'll be up here in a minute, too.